Hi, I'm McGarren Flack, and today we're going to talk about varnishing. Varnishing is a really important thing if you care about the longevity of your artwork. I want to go over some pretty important things about how to varnish and why you should varnish. So, first couple of things. Why on earth should you varnish your artwork? Well, you might get your painting to a certain stage like this one, where you think that it's completely finished, and then you varnish it because you want to bring those colors back out. And then you realize uh, there was a mistake. You had the wrong value in an area. I don't know if you can see where I have the wrong value in the area of this painting, but it's there. Literally, right there. Do, do you see it? It's right there. Maybe, maybe I should zoom up. It's right there. Okay, it's the side of my cheek that I painted. I thought I had everything done and rendered out, and this side of the cheek right here was too light in value. And when I varnished it, I didn't see it until after I varnished it. And then it brought out a big contrast in those colors. So one reason that we wanna varnish is to protect your painting. It is a temporary layer. It is meant to be temporary so that people can remove it in case it gets uh, injured or cracked or somebody throws water on it or oil or whatever happens to spill on it, they can actually clean it and it's a temporary layer. If you do not have varnish on it and water gets onto your oil paintings or whatnot, then you might run into some issues. So protection is the number one reason. The other is that it harmonizes everything together. You might have, especially in oil paintings, some areas of your painting, your lighter values will look kind of glossy and they'll, they'll stick out pretty good. Your darker layers might do what is called sinking in, where the color actually gets a little bit lighter in value and it has this almost milky look to it. And then when you varnish it, the values go again dark to where you intended the values to be. So, here, darker values, darker values, lighter values. Before I varnished this painting, it looked pretty close to the same value in the background, and I didn't want that effect. So I varnished it to be able to bring out the effect that I wanted. So first one, protection. Second reason, to make everything in harmony together. It will have the same sheen on the painting. So instead of some of the areas where it would be glossy and then other areas will be matte, um, it, it makes it so that it's all glassy or it's all matte, which brings us to the next thing. Can you varnish with glossy or matte? Because I know some people don't really like glossy looking paintings, which is totally unacceptable. I mean, who would not like glossy paintings? Well, there are some people out there that do not like glossy paintings. And because of that, they have satin and also matte. Now here's the key. Whenever you're going to varnish matte or satin on your painting, you gotta make sure that you varnish it first with a glossy. The reason why that is, is because they put wax and other UV inhibitors. UV inhibitor makes it so that the sunlight doesn't go onto the painting and destroy the painting over time. That's kind of what UV rays do. And so they have inhibitors that kind of stop the sun from coming into there. Okay, tangent. Back to the thing. So your first layer is going to be a glossy varnished layer because it doesn't have wax mixed in with the varnish. Then your next layer is gonna be matte or satin, whichever direction you wanna go. And here are some different views from Gamblin. Now this is not the manufacturer of varnishes, but they make one that is called Gamvar, V-A-R. And Gamvar they have glossy, matte, and satin. So glossy is the really shiny stuff, satin is semi-shiny, and matte is not shiny at all. I've done some paintings in the past where I've wanted a matte varnish. So you do a glossy layer first, and then you do a matte. If you do two layers of matte or two layers of satin, then you get kind of this uh, frosty look to the painting and people don't know why it looks kind of frosty. So do gloss first, then the others. Okay, I think I've 
nail that on the head. So that's an important thing. Can you varnish acrylics? Yes, you can varnish acrylics. Um, one thing that I would recommend that you stay away from is using a varnish that you also use in your mediums. For example, if you have Damar resin in your painting medium while you're actually doing your painting on the layers, when it cures, that Damar resin will be in with it. If you use a Damar varnish, which is pretty popular, and you paint over it, when the conservator or whoever is coming to clean up your painting cleans the Damar varnish off, it will actually remove some of your medium. So you want to make sure that your varnish is separate from the actual paint mediums that you use in your painting. Okay, now that we've talked about the why you varnish, let's talk about how you can varnish. I like to varnish a lot of paintings at the same time. So I will get five or six paintings together that are fully cured to be able to varnish. Timing is a very important thing. So you've got to make sure that your painting is dry. And how do you do that? You take your nail, like your thumbnail, and you press it in the thickest area of your painting. So in this painting here, if I take my nail and press it into the white that is there, white-ish, it's not completely white, white-ish area, and if my nail doesn't indent, then it is dry enough or cured enough for you to be able to varnish. If there's a little bit of give or an indentation, then your painting is not ready to varnish. That's why a lot of places recommend to let your painting cure for six months, even sometimes a year, depending upon how thick your paint is. But that's a good way to be able to test to make sure that it's dry enough for you to be able to varnish. Some paints dry really quick in like a week. Some, not so much. So make sure that it is dry and then you can start to varnish. Well, when you are about to varnish, you need to make sure that your varnish is staying in the same space as your painting for at least 12 hours. So the night before you're going to varnish, take all of your paint, put all your varnish into one space or room and leave it there. Well, technically they say for four hours, but you need to make sure that the temperatures are equal between the painting and the varnish. So that's a very important thing. The other is you need to use a fine haired brush. Nothing that is too intense, uh, like a bristle brush that will leave too many scrapey marks on your canvas. Yes, scrapey marks, it's a very important word. So make sure that you are prepared in your space. Also, I'd recommend having a drop cloth or paper that is surrounding your canvas or whatever you're about to varnish because you will have flow that goes off of the edge of it and varnish is not very fun to get off of other surfaces. So here are the steps that you should take to be able to varnish once everything is set up and ready to go. Lay your painting on a flat surface. Then you are going to pour or put some varnish on your paintbrush and brush it onto your surface. Do not go fast. If you go fast with that paintbrush, it will create these little bubbles. And sometimes those bubbles will cure in bubbly form. Either way, they'll kind of cure that way. So you want to go nice and slow with your varnish over your surface. Make it nice and even. You don't want thick areas and you don't want thin areas. So pull from the thick areas out into the thin areas. To finish it off, you just go in one direction with your paintbrush, overlapping just a little bit so you get a more consistent, even look. Now, depending upon the varnish, sometimes with the Gamsol and the temperature outside and with the humidity level, you have to let your varnish cure for the first layer. If you don't let it sit there and cure in that one to two hour window and you do another layer, the second layer is just gonna mix in with the first layer and it's not gonna be fully cured. So you need to make sure that your varnish layer is cured and then you can do your second layer. It's recommended to do the second layer in the opposite or perpendicular direction. So if your varnish layer was coming first this way, your second layer, which you did a couple hours later, is gonna go this way. 
and that will create a more even look to it. I've had some artists be really successful at doing two layers going the same direction, but you know, whatever works out for you. And you won't know unless you actually try to do it. Now, another side of caution. Some varnishes, very stinky. Gambar is not really that stinky. So you could have it in your studio space. Just make sure you have ventilation. Just because it doesn't have smell doesn't mean that it's not going to cure fast or um, have vapors that are harmful to your brain because our brains are in our head and they're kind of useful at times, especially when you're wanting to be an artist. But you want to try to keep it after it is cured, keep it upright so that dust doesn't collect onto the surface of your painting. And that is the brushing method. When you use the brushing method, what actually happens is the varnish will get settled into the little valleys between the ridges of your paint. So if you have texture or even the texture of the canvas, you have these nice little ridges that go back and forth. The varnish is going to fill and level out in areas. So the peaks will get less varnish and the valleys of your paint will get more varnish. If you use a spray varnish, which is readily available, Gambar does not have one, at least not when I made this video, um, you can spray it on there and it actually makes a good even layer of varnish over your entire painting. So it doesn't really fill into those valleys very much. Now, what would be the point of that? If you want more of a consistent look with your varnish, then use a spray varnish. If you want more of a traditional look with your paintings and you don't have that much texture, then I just recommend using the brush varnish. Man, that's a lot of varnish words. The more layers you do, the more it's going to build up the varnish into those valleys. Okay, beyond that, if you have an issue and you find out, oh my gosh, I just varnished this and I messed up in an area, like this painting, then what do you do? You can just take a paper towel and some mineral spirits and you just wipe in that area and remove it. So remove the varnish if it's dry. If it's still wet and you catch it, you can just take your paper towel and remove it, which is really easy. And what happened here? But if I let it totally cure and I needed to fix that area, remove the varnish first. You come in, Remove the varnish from that area, repaint your painting, and then you can do another layer of varnish over your painting. So there are some other things that might happen with varnishing. And one is called blooming. That is when you see color changes on your surface and you can fix that usually by making sure that the temperature is the same with your artwork and also make sure that it is not expired. Most varnishes only last about six months. You can take it, store it in your fridge so that it'll last a little bit longer, but once you've opened it to use it, don't store it. I know you're an artist, we're all artists. We wanna save our things and use them time and time again, but the problem is you'll get issues if you hold on to it. For some reason, varnish does not store very well. So after a couple of months or even one month, I will usually just toss it out because I can't use it, which again is why I do multiple paintings at the same time. So varnish is temporary. Let's go over the important facts here. Make sure that your painting is dry before you varnish. Make sure that it is your painting and your varnish are in the same space for at least four hours before varnishing. Use a fine hair brush and make sure that the varnish is not made of the same material that you used in your mediums for your paintings. If you're gonna do two layers, make sure the first layer is cured or dry before doing the second layer. Once it's dried, store it vertically so that you don't get a bunch of dust on it because then you have to just clean it all off. And sometimes it's just not that fun to clean. So I hope this video was informative for you and that you enjoyed watching it, and if you did, great. And if you didn't, I don't know how to tell you. Either way, I hope it was informative. Thank you very much for your time and have a stellar day.